Thank you, Jan and Frederick, the department, uh, my faculty, the university, for this great honor. It's amazing to be cited with the inspirational other honorary doctors uh, for this award. In 2011, I started investing more effort in studying open science. And in the same year, Sarah McKenzie, my wife's best friend, uh, maid of honor at our wedding, uh, was diagnosed with a rare form of ovarian cancer. She and Patrick, her husband, were very motivated to understand what the research was uh, that was available on this rare form of cancer. So they started, because they wanted to advocate for her care. So they started to investigate the literature and called us saying, I found titles that seem like they could be relevant. I'm not sure. I read the abstracts. Looks like this might be useful. But then when I went to go see the paper, it said I needed to pay $20, $40, $60 each paper. It's going to cost us thousands of dollars to just identify, see the literature in order to find out whether these papers are relevant for the problem that I have. Luckily, she had academic friends, so she sent us the lists, and we used our institutional affiliation, got the articles, and sent them to her. Over time, she started to become eligible for clinical trials, testing new therapies that had potential promise uh, for her condition. Sometimes the side effects were terrible, but they went into these, thera these therapies knowing that the research was very important just to get the knowledge for everyone and to provide some hope for them. At the same time, I was learning that more than half of clinical trials registered never have their results reported. People like Sarah going into these trials and there is no knowledge gain from them because the results were never shared, success or failure. None of it was being disseminated, what a waste. I also learned that in trials that were reported, it was surprisingly common that the primary outcomes that were identified in the planning of the research were not the same outcomes reported at the end of the research after the results were known. The pressure for obtaining positive results is high, so high that we might rationalize ourselves to reporting the best outcomes to increase their publishability and promise at the cost of their credibility. None of this made sense. Research is for the public good, and yet it was not treated as a public good. For the research to benefit the outcomes, the outcomes need to be reported. They need to be accessible. The underlying data and the process of drawing inference from that data needed to be available for scrutiny, for extension, for evaluating the credibility. Where was our commitment to transparency? Where's our commitment to pursuing the truth? Where's our commitment to Sarah? Sarah died the summer before last, leaving her spouse Patrick and young boys, Ben and James. I don't know if open science would have saved her. I do know that science being closed didn't help. I also know that there are thousands of others today like Sarah. There'll be thousands more tomorrow and thousands more a year from now. The funding public is investing us in the hopes that we can deliver knowledge, just as the vice rector said, that will address the pressing challenges that face society. It's easy to see the importance of open science when the application of the research has such a palpable concrete target like eliminating cancer. But it is just as important in the basic research enterprise, like Professor Lieber pointed out, where we don't yet have any idea of where it will go, but how that knowledge will be created will inspire new solutions that we can't yet anticipate. And because that future is unknown, my only reasonable position as a basic researcher investigating fundamental questions is to perform and per perceive those as the most important questions that anyone in the world could be studying and to commit myself to showing my work 
to sharing the outcomes of it, whatever those are, so that the public can scrutinize, so that the self-corrective and cumulative processes of science can work. There is no backup plan for science. There are no other institutions that we can look to to help us with our own inefficiencies. Knowledge building for the public good is up to us. And we know that there is a dysfunctional culture of incentives that prioritize publishability, sometimes at the expense of the credibility of those findings. But the culture is ours to create, and so we can change it, and we can improve the efficiency of science. I'm so grateful for this award, and I appreciate everybody's attention and interest. Thank you.